Good morning, Roots and Branches. Hello, hello. Thank you for being here. It's great to see all of your faces, those of you who are able to join us today, whether you're in person or online. You're uh, live streaming with us today. Please say hi in the comments. Let us know you're here uh, because we are thankful for you. Um, here at Roots and Branches, we're all about growing deeper in faith and reaching out in love. So I hope uh, during our time together today, you're able to grow in those ways. Ways we do that is through music. So if you're here in person, I invite you to stand. And if you're here online, uh, open your heart along with me as we uh, lift a song together. To anyone who can hear this song, there's a place for you. To anyone held back by fear. It isn't true. For the sculptor of the heavens also made your every part just to fit what he is crafting, his perfected work of art. There's a place for you here with Roots and Branches. You know, as we were singing that, I was reflecting uh, on, on that song. I wrote that song about 10 years ago uh, with a dream of a faith, a faith community joining together and singing those words. And uh, it was before I knew uh, anything about what would come to pass with this community here. And so grateful that, that now there's a whole, there's a room full of people singing this song together. Um, about our need for God and our need for one another and the mutual support that we offer to one another as being a, a real community and an open community, that it's not just us and no one else, but uh, whoever comes can feel that same kind of welcome. Uh, it's pretty great. If you want to know more about Roots and Branches and the kind of welcome we offer, I want to invite you to click the link in the video description and head over to rootsandbranchesmn.org. Uh, you can find out more about us there. And uh, there's also a way that you can you can give online. Um, if, if you feel led, no obligation, um, but we're going to continue lifting our hearts uh, through song this morning. You 
are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light. When the darkness closes in, you are hope, you are hope. You have covered all my sin. has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the our hearts sing to you this morning and may it just be the beginning of a song that goes through our weeks and our lives and our families and everywhere we go may this song of our hearts ring true in this community with your love for all people amen you can be seated and if there are kids here for children's church you are dismissed to head out with Krista I'm just going to transition to the host, which is also me. Uh, <laughs> I'm Colin. I'm the pastor here at Roots and Branches. And uh, normally we have uh, part of our congregation come up and offer uh, some words of welcome. And our person who was going to do that 
uh, lives in the same house as our bass player who is scheduled for today, and they had the flu in their house last night. So that's gross, and so we keep them in our prayers. Um, sick kids are never fun, and sick adults are sometimes worse. Um, so thank you for being here today uh, here at Roots and Branches. I already shared a little bit about what we're about, and uh, there's uh, so many ways that you can stay connected, and the best way to do that is just to uh, click that link and, take and head over to rootsandbranchesmn.org and uh, click on the Contact Us tab so that you can find out more about what's going on around here. Um, in terms of updates, the one thing I want to share today is if you've been paying attention to the COVID news in our world, it ain't great. Um, it's actually really bad, and in some ways as bad as it's ever been. Um, at the same time, those of us who are taking uh, all the precautions of masking, vaccination, and things like that, like we want to still gather in person with all of the right kind of boundaries to make sure we're uh, caring for the health of one another. Um, so I want to just stress that as a community. We're gonna, we intend to continue gathering in person, but if you are not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Because if you do get COVID, and it seems like on, on Monday this week, one in 100 people in America had COVID as of that day. Like, it's ridiculous uh, where, where we're at because this new Omicron variant is so highly contagious. So um, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated because then if you get it, it won't be as bad. Um, if you haven't gotten boosted, get boosted. Um, this is like, and I'm, you know, vaccines have been become politicized over the last year maybe you've noticed um, but you know this was actually words straight from our bishop who said encourage your churches to get vaccinated and so I'm gonna um, this is all of us together as United Methodists across the state need to be arm in arm because then the you know the hundreds of thousands of us could actually if we could all get on the same page then be part of the solution together so Join with me in being part of the solution, um, getting vaccinated, you know, respecting social distancing, wearing your masks. It's all, it's all a big deal. Uh, none of it is unimportant. So um, thank you for, for working to make the world a better place along with me. Uh, it's part of the core of our identity is to do no harm and then to find ways that we can avoid doing harm and then actively jump into those. So thank you for participating in that with me. Um, today, um, we've got a special guest speaker today. Uh, Jenny is going to be sharing the message today, and it's part of her ongoing ser series about seasons. Uh, in the fall, she shared what God is teaching us through the season of fall. And today, she's going to be sharing with us what God is teaching us through the season of winter. Um, and so, she's going to come up and share with us in just a moment. Uh, but first, Zach, if you would come up and share this morning's scripture. See, today's scripture is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 5. There's a season for everything, a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted, a time for killing and a time for healing, a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time to a time for avoiding embraces. Hello everyone. Hello. It's good to see you guys here. Um what? Oh, I thought I heard mom. My kids are here. They really want to hear what I have to say today, which is kind of shocking, actually. <laughs> um, yay. Well, I'm glad to be um, on this part side of things. You know, I'm usually doing piano and band and stuff, so we flipped today. Because um, I feel in the past that I've learned a ton by, um, by studying the seasons, and I bought a book 
a few years ago. The women did a, a retreat that was based off of fall themes, and so I bought a book that I'll be referencing a ton today. It's called The Circle of Life, The Heart's Journey Through the Seasons by Joyce Rupp and Macrina Wied Wiederker. I did not say that right. I just saw, I call her Mac, Mac W. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, and, and today is evidence of people calling in sick. I know that there are a ton of families that have sick kids, and it's like, ugh, it's winter, right? It's winter, and with all the things that comes with winter, I wore my most wintry sweater that I could today. I wore my boots today. I'm like, we're just wintering it up. Who likes the winter? I like the winter, um, what, attire, I should say. Like, you know, it's all cozy and stuff. I guess maybe we try to comfort ourselves with that because the weather is horrible. Um, okay, so for those of you watching today online, this is a more interactive um, service or sermon, I guess, or talk today. So um, maybe, um, you know, if you want to respond in the comment section, if you're watching online when we're offering our stuff verbally here. And then later, you might want to grab like just a piece of paper or a journal or something because we're going to just do a little bit of reflecting or writing. So um, when that time comes, feel free to participate on your own, but just giving you a heads up if you want to grab a pen or a pencil. Uh, uh, notebook paper near you so as we go along okay so you guys what are some things that you dislike about the winter season okay cold. cold 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 that was a nanosecond after I said that pretty much why do we live here right <laughs> okay cold oh kind of boring yeah Jerry said there's nothing to do it lasts a very long time yes Lucy it's several months here where we, we happen to live in this wonderful place that experiences the actual winter season. What else? Anything else? Dark. Yeah. Dark? Darkness. Yes. It is a dark time of year. Yep. What? Uh, snow. What? Driving. Driving in the snow. Yeah, it makes everything a little more complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the conditions can, like, kind of put a hinder on all of your plans for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the landscape looks dead, right? All the beautiful colors are gone. It's like gray and bland. There's no flowers that are just giving us so much life. And shoveling, shoveling yes, <laughs> removing of the snow. <laughs> that is just, it just, uh, it happens when it happens, right? We have no control over when it's coming, and we have to deal with it. Yeah. What else, anything else? I mean, I don't want to cut off the dislike list <laughs> for sure. Things break down because of the cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Batteries in cars, perhaps, maybe, Dad. <laughs> this week. People's bodies, yeah, they don't, yeah, respond to the weather as nice as, like, the when you get older. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all the aches and pains. There's illness usually this time of year, too, that feels like it's just always on this wave, and that's not fun either. All right. So what are some things that you might like about winter? Maybe you've never even thought of that. Okay, no bugs. <laughs> that was also a nanosecond after I said that, so that's good. No bugs, yeah, for sure. What else could you like about winter? Christmas, yeah, we have a magical holiday in the middle of that. Yeah. <laughs> Sledding? Sledding, yeah, there are some outdoor sports. Tubing. Tubing. You know, skiing, yep. There's some extreme winter sports that are kind of like, wow, we're really embracing this dangerous weather. Um, ice fishing, okay, good. If you're an outdoorsman, person, outdoors person, and you want to do some fishing. Hot chocolate, yeah, that's just not really good in the summer, is it? <laughs> Hot chocolate. Anything else? You like the snow. Chloe likes snow, that's good. I got to say, it's really... I think that part of it is beautiful. Like the white, at least it's so dark. It's so bright. There's sometimes in the middle of the night when the moon's out and you can like, I feel like it's more, is it morning? Oh no, it's just the moon bouncing off the snow. So that is kind of like, it illuminates, I guess. It's like a different kind of brightness, but. What? Oh, sun dogs. I don't know about sun dogs. Oh. Oh, like a reflection of sunlight yeah. off the snow? Oh, oh, cool. Oh, in the sky. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah, there's some unique things. Yeah, unique things that only happen in the wintertime. 
Anything else? That was about it. I think our negative list was much longer. So I can tell where our hearts are at, right? We do live in a place where we do get to experience all the seasons here, which is kind of unique and cool. Um, I had a conversation with a young adult Bible study one time we were leading, and this, this guy had just graduated college, and he had made his home here in Minneapolis, and he was just like, I always dreamed of living in Minnesota when I got, grow, grew up, and I was like, why? <laughs> I think he was from, like, Tennessee or something. It was because you have all the seasons here. It's like every, you know, every winter story that you've heard or movie, it's always snowing. So, like, when you, I don't know, like, we just get to live in a place where we experience all the seasons, which is perfect. <laughs> yes, sometimes in the same day. You got it. In the same, yeah, exactly. So um, so we're walking through the seasons. Every seasonal change, we'll be just talking about giving a little, like, n- acknowledgement to the thing that's literally thrust upon us every year. We can't really change it, but we can learn and grow from it. And I think that God te- can teach us through the physical surroundings and this transformation that's happening literally in nature around us that we should probably open our eyes and observe what it could possibly be meaning for us. Um, so we also created a wall. I don't know if you can see over there. We, I got some artwork on Etsy that represents the four seasons, and it's still coming together. We have a board that ha- is going to have a saying on there, but every season later we're going to write some things that we're learning, and we're going to pin it up there so you can kind of keep contemplating it through the season. I don't know if you guys noticed the tree mural outside, too, is representing the winter season right now with some snow and a beautiful cardinal, that pop of color. That's also kind of beautiful. So just so we're kind of acknowledging like what we're doing here um, in our space and also what we're learning and, and God is teaching us through what Richard Rohr called maybe the first Bible is creation. It has so much to teach us, the first good news. So anyway, just a little nod to that. Okay, so um, I'm going to just set the stage for what we're going to talk about today. As Colin mentioned, we're talking about winter. I mentioned that too, but This book is just so beautiful and meaningful. I'm going to just read a little excerpt from this book, and then we're going to keep talking about themes for winter. So, the challenge of winter is how to go within without feeling locked in. Winter has much to teach us about the inner journey. It suggests a time of resting and deepening, a time to gather the resources needed in other seasons. Winter has a lovely way of calling us home to what is essential. Among those essentials is the simple act of waiting and trust and not trying to make anything happen. We can't lock out all the cold, unpleasant parts of winter or of our life. If we try to do that, we will also lock out some of the beauty. We can, however, learn to let some of our plans go and practice receiving what just is. Winter, with its sensational kind of letting go, is a marvelous teacher and has secrets to share with us. Let the land, the trees, and the plants teach you that which you see at first glance is not the whole truth. Winter's first glance speaks of barrenness and emptiness, yet that very emptiness houses a lovely truth. Listen to the emptiness. Listen for the truth. Perhaps it was in one of Thomas Merton's moments of contemplating this hallowed emptiness that he wrote, love winter when the plants say nothing. The tree or plant in exile from spring's sweet breathing appears to say nothing. On the other hand, there is never a time when the plant says nothing. It hasn't lost its voice just because it isn't flowering or greening. Perhaps it depends on who is looking at the plant. For those who know how to see with the eye of the soul and listen with the ear of the heart, even the barren plant speaks silent truths. Let the plant rest. Love winter when the plant says nothing. So, yeah. So there are some good themes, I think. And I think as we get older, I feel like we can appreciate this season better. I think younger we embrace some of the wild craziness of the season like the cool sports and the hot chocolate and the Christmas time but we know as we get older there's other harsh realities that can set in but it doesn't mean it can't teach us so three main themes that I want to talk about today um, for winter that we can learn from is number one I would say is rest stillness patience Um, and so the winter can thrust upon us willingly or not the chance to slow down and to rest so um, a snowstorm comes, right? Literally everything screeches to a halt. <laughs> you know, you got to take care of that. But also sometimes you're blocked in. And what are you going to do? You have a snow day. Sometimes you make the best of it. You make hot chocolate. You go out and play in the snow or whatever if you're a child. If you're an adult, you're kind of like, yeah, I don't have to go to work or, you know, those kind of things. So um, it can be a gift if we choose to, you know, look at it, see it that way. Exactly. Um, so shoveling. Slippery roads and sidewalks, they all cause us to like just take it easy because you got to slow down, deal with the thing right in front of you, right? 
It's also the season of illness. <laughs> you know, we talk about that, and that's a literal physical thing of like, whoa, you got to you got to rest. You know, that's the only way you're going to come out of this is if you rest, listen to your body. Um, and so it's quite it's quite a different idea than what our culture identifies as values, which is like productivity, productivity and efficiency. Like, you know, so it's so inconvenient when the streets are not plowed and when you have to go out and do your driveway and you can't be productive when you're sick and you can't when you're overtired and you're exhausted or when you have to stay home for a snow day. And so I feel like it's sort of the physical representation of what we should be embracing is this idea of rest. And then do we have to wait till our body breaks down and we get sick or a snowstorm comes to choose? Could, could we actually choose rest before that is thrust upon us. And I feel like it's kind of a delicate balance of God being like, and bam, you're all going to have to deal with this. Let's see how you deal with the snow. Or, you know, how do you deal with this illness? Are you going to take care of yourself? Are you going to rest um, or plow through? So we were all kind of sick right before, right around Christmas. The Tanners, we had a cold. And the week before that, I had just got done with a couple weeks of intense stuff at my music school. And I was pretty tired and wiped out. And Throughout that week, I had like a hoarse voice and I felt really tired and later then more kids and family got sick and I was like, hmm, I think I was sick, but I did not admit that I was sick. <laughs> and I just kept, there were things I had to do. I had to complete this thing and, com and then I can rest once X, Y, Z, you know? And I felt like I should have really listened to my body. I needed it in that moment and I did not take it. So, um, you know, I just feel like rest is a huge thing we miss in our culture and it's super valuable. And so... Um, you know, God has created the cycle of productivity of and growth with a balance of rest. So just like this season is a season of rest, and the land literally gets a break, right? It has to. It cannot be productive 100% of the time, or what will happen? Or if humans are productive 100% of the time? Breakdown, burnout, right? You cannot do it. We should not do it, because it will only lead to our demise, I feel. So and the idea of Sabbath, like God instructed that very early on when people really had to work hard for their food and their livelihood. And he said, there is a day you do nothing. You just get to rest. And that is something we've completely lost in our culture, too. You just, there's no day of the week that stuff is not happening, you know. Um, so I am struggling how to figure this out, but I do feel like this is, a, this is the season to really contemplate. How are you going to schedule rest? Um, so, and I think you got to you got to block it in and, and choose it instead of waiting for it to happen to you. So um, winter gives us an opportunity to value taking a break or simply just being. So there's no expectation other than to just rejuvenate. That's all that's asked of you is to just be. And I think that's also something in our culture. If you're not productive or successful or prove your worth, then you don't have anything to show. But actually, this season is just saying you are valued just in your simple state of just being and existing. So I, I love that idea. So rest. Um, number two, the second theme that I want to talk about is hope. Um, this is a big one. So I love the idea of Christmas. That's a really neat or like a star, you know, those magical moments that we have, which is, I mean, that's a literal, you know, hope right out in front of us of something beautiful happening. But um, when all things look frozen, like Laurel had said, everything looks dead. Um, and, and fallow, there is still something happening underneath the surface. And then, as I read earlier, it's just the challenge to see the reality of what's happening. So we do know that they're not dead, right? They look dead, but they're actually not dead. There's something happening, but they need to transition to that next phase in order to burst through with life in the spring, new life, a new thing. Like, they shed their old leaves. They're still the same tree, but they're going to get a new round of leaves, new blossoms, new um, fruit and vegetation coming. So um, I think that that is a challenge for us to see the reality of what's happening. So restoration, creativity, and dreaming of what could be. So this season can tend to represent where it feels like maybe in your life, your personal life, some it's dormant. There's nothing happening. Um, what's my future? Where am I headed? It's okay. You're probably in a good season of rest, which can bring some clarity, but also when the trees and the landscape loses all the things, can you not see clearer? And doesn't the landscape look different? Like, I don't know if you've ever looked out your backyard and go, oh, I can see through to my neighbors or whatever the next thing is that you see. And you're like, I would have never seen that through the lush of, of um, 
you know, summer or even in fall when the colors are changing and things, you see things differently in different seasons. And so this season, though it looks dead and fallow, I know that there's stuff happening under the surface. And so you can also take heart and know that there's stuff happening under the surface. surface. And um, that's what hope is. In the middle of what looks dead and nothing's happening, you know that spring is coming. You know that that's going to happen. When has the world ever failed to turn to the next season it has never it will keep doing it and so we know that we can say that's like that's just the promise of hope um so winter solstice is the day I don't know if you've heard about that recently people are like starting to talk about winter solstice summer solstice if you're like attuned to you know the seasons and the calendar of the moon all that kind of stuff it is the actual shortest day of the year with the least amount of sunlight so winter solstice on this in 2021 was December 21st, I think. So it was like the latest sunrise and the earliest sunset. So the least amount of minutes that we have. But lots of traditions and cultures have like celebrated on that day. And I have a friend who's really into, um, she, she has studied lots of spiritual paths and stuff like that. And so she walked me through last year um, in the dead of COVID. And we did like a winter solstice kind of, we had a bonfire outside. It was really beautiful night. It was warm. So we weren't able to do that this year. But, um, and she just talked about how you celebrate that s literally starting the next day, things get brighter even one minute at a time, right? You're adding like, I think it's like one minute, 30 seconds of daylight every day or something like that. And so you're celebrating that we made it to the shortest day of the year and from here on up, it's just smooth sailing, right? Or not smooth sailing, I shouldn't say. But what's interesting is that you celebrate that on the darkest day, but knowing that you're headed in the right direction. But on day one of the next calendar day, it's literally like what one minute brighter <laughs> so it's like you're not going to be able to tell you know so you but you're still holding out that hope that it is going to get better it's getting better even though i don't see it like you don't see the change until like may you know and then we have the daylight savings and we're like wow <laughs> you know it's like kind of crazy and especially in summer when we're like remember when the sun won't set till 9:30 at night you know and you just you remember that that's coming but you're living in the reality of it's still dark but you're holding the hope that it's getting better every day, right? Um, so where am I? Here we go. Uh, yeah, so we are going to hold out hope. We can be filled with hope even in the season, what looks like fallow and barren. So, um, and I wanted Colin to share this story actually because it was a perfect like little teaching moment that it wasn't actually in winter, but I feel like it's a perfect story. So. You thought you were off the hook, but I asked him, can you share something quick today? <laughs> so he's going to share this little story about hope that was also relevant in nature. Talk. Go. You talk. <laughs> you probably all have heard okay. this story. Okay. Yes, I've told this story uh, a few times. It was during a dark season in my life uh, when... Oh, he's my husband. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> we're, m we're married. <laughs> so <laughs> Not everybody gets a back rub just for coming up here, just so you know. <laughs> Um, and uh, I was getting up early to work at Starbucks, and I was a grown adult with four children, and I was working at Starbucks because things in my life had not gone as planned, and um, and so uh, I got up extra early. I, actually, I was planning to get up at 4:30 to go and open at Starbucks, which is not anything I recommend, <laughs> and but I was actually awakened. 15 minutes early by birds going bananas outside my window. And the sun wasn't even out yet. It's pitch black outside. And birds are chirping so loudly, it wakes me up 15 minutes before the time that was already much too early for me to be waking up to begin with. And so I'm groggily getting myself ready, brushing my teeth, and cursing the birds outside the bathroom window. Why are you singing? And I was contemplating that myself, too. Just, just I'm, I'm here. I don't want to be awake. Why the heck are you awake, right? And, and as I asked that question, the answer to it immediately rushed into my head. Uh, it was, they're singing because they know the sun is coming. And I thought to myself, I can probably sing, too. Uh, even though I was in a dark time of my life. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't summer. No, it was 
It was it was a winter. It was a metaphorical winter for me. I was in a win in this in the season of winter, but I can sing too uh, with my life. I can have positivity. I can know that there are reasons to have hope, um, even though in this moment uh, things might be dark. So. Yeah, I love that. That's that's exactly what hope is, right? Those birds. So actually, Colin got a tattoo with those birds because it was such a meaningful moment in his life to remind him so he has the daily reminder now but I feel like and you know that was just awesome because it was it kind of smacked you in the, in the head and you sometimes have those moments of this is whoa this just taught me something massive and I feel like we just have to kind of be open to it or our eyes open like our heart open to being taught these things and then our eyes open so thank you Colin for sharing that if you've never heard that story that's awesome if you've heard it 10 times even better. <laughs> okay, so the third theme that I want to talk about is courage. Um, so I think courage is a theme for winter because, well, one part is we have to physically brave the weather here, like where we are. It's, it's cold sometimes, and it's nasty cold, and you can't even do the things you want to do, your walks, your, you know, going outside and playing with friends or um, whatever you want to do, your normal routine, going in the garden. You just don't, it's not pleasant. Um, and it takes courage to get out there. Like we know now over COVID, it's like, okay, I'm just going to gear up because I have to get outside, right? Like it was kind of driving us all crazy. So I heard from several people like, okay, I can do the winter as long as I have the clothes, <laughs> like the right stuff so I'm not freezing. Um, but yeah, so we can really admire, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, oh, some people don't make it here. They end up leaving. <laughs> they move because it's hard on their bodies as they grow older they just want a little ease right in their life and this definitely takes some courage and challenging to live here at times so I Cole and I were having a conversation about this and we were like wow we can really appreciate native cultures native peoples and like pioneer people that kind of started spreading it well you know native cultures were here way long before that but like you know braving with what we would say is like minimal resources <laughs> Like, to be able to survive here, and honestly, like, it's, it was, it, for them, it was life or death, so they did have to figure it out, but really, I mean, when we live in our comfy, cozy homes with our hot chocolate and our snuggly sweaters, we don't have to go out if we don't need to. If we do, we're in a warm car traveling to the next place. I mean, that's also a privilege that we have. Not everybody has that as well, but, you know, I just, w we were just took a minute. We're like, wow, we really admire those people and want to honor them, <laughs> like, what they had to put up with. That took a lot of courage right? Just to survive. Um, so um, along with courage, also they probably had to have hope that things will get better, <laughs> like the spring will come and that they can withstand this type of weather. So, so to see the reality of our own internal winters sometimes also takes courage to brave that as well. So if like Colin had a, he just mentioned his winter season, I wonder if you look back on your life, if you had any dark seasons, I guess I would say, dark seasons where it seems like nothing's happening, a tragedy befalls you or whatever, that um, it probably took courage to get through that, but you did it. Uh, I wanted to read another section of the, of the book here. Okay. So, your moments of courage may not seem like big ones to someone else. They might not be things like experiencing cancer or filing for divorce. Your story of courage may be the steps you take each day in trying to be kind to a family member, saying yes to getting well, offering forgiveness to someone who has treated you badly, standing up for what you believe, risking some new behavior, being a volunteer for a program that's new to you, or anything requiring an act of courage and strength from you within your heart. So I want to give you guys just a little visual representation of this. Kala, can you start, can you grab those two baskets and hand one out on this side and then bring one over to this side too? Yeah, there we go. Yep, hand one over here to Laura. Perfect. Um, so we're going to pass around these baskets. They have stones in them, okay? So just pick one that maybe speaks to you. They're nothing special. They're just rocks, really. Um, and then grab a pen and a note card too because we're going to use that for in a little bit. But um, I want you, and at home, if you've got, you know, um, your notepad there, you don't have a stone today, but you can probably visualize a stone um, and what that represents. So that's coming around. And I'm going to just talk about 
this idea of stones, okay? And what this is meant to represent courage or why it's meant to represent courage. So stones are sturdy, enduring providers of strength. Large rocks offer refuge as caves and give shade from the sun. Stones are used as firm foundations for buildings and boundary fences. Walls of stone enhance the beauty of gardens and parks. They often outline paths of labyrinths. Stones were a source for tools in ancient days and were used to build altars in biblical times. Stones of their own nature are wonderful elements of faithful endurance. That is why stones have been chosen as a symbol for the season of winter. It is during this harsh, cold season that endurance is especially needed. Stones stand strong and endure in all kinds of weather. Likewise, people with endurance stand strong in their winter season of life. They have courage to wait patiently in the silent fallowness of winter's empty months. They trust that they will have the strength they need to journey through the apparent bleakness and austerity of this season. They walk through winter's darkness with a firm belief that this space of life is a time of creative waiting, holding the nurturing energy that will one day birth within them. So um, I want you to take the stone, and if you can hold it in your hand, that's perfect, buddy. Um, I want you to just think of a courageous moment in your life, maybe where you took a step, a leap of faith, um, and maybe it didn't pan out. Maybe you broke your leg. I don't know. But, like, <laughs> you were courage enough to try something, right? Um, and you did it. You survived because you're here on the other side of that courageous act, too. So um, we're going to just play a little bit of music, and I'm going to give you about five minutes or maybe four minutes to think of that courageous moment. You can reflect on that. Also, if you want to take to writing on your paper, I would like you to write down um, – you know, one thing that winter could be teaching you during this season that God is teaching us through winter. And then after the service, you can go over to that wall over there and like close pin that up so we can see this cool thing, this collective lessons that God might be teaching us through winter. So I'm going to give you four minutes. You can reflect on your courageous moment or you can journal. You could do both. OK, at home, hang tight and we'll be back in just a few more moments. So there you go.
All right. Feel free to still write if you are reflecting on that. And if you didn't have anything to write today, you can take it home and bring it back anytime during the season. We'll just keep those up all season, okay, all season long. Um, I had We had beautiful fall ones, by the way, when we did this in the fall, and I read through all of them, but we, di we didn't have the, the display yet to put them all up, but I think it's going to be a neat reminder. You can just check that out whenever you have a few minutes before or after service to go see what people have written. And if you've joined us online and you wanted to write that in the comments too, I would gladly write it out and put it up on our wall too, so that would be awesome. Um, so I want to share one last reading before we conclude this time and do one um, prayer at the end. But this, this is from John of the Cross, who was a Catholic priest and mystic from the 1500s. He actually became a, a saint as well through the Catholic Church um, later, I think, in like the 1900s. But he wrote, To come to the pleasure you have not, you must go by the way in which you enjoy not. To come to the knowledge you have not, you must go by the way you know not. To come to the possession you have not, you must go by a way in which you possess not. To come to a way you are not, you must go by the way in which you are not. So, yeah, kind of deep, right? But basically, you want something different, you have to go a different way than you've ever gone, right? And that takes courage. So take heart and take courage, my friends. And this is why we do this together in a community is because you don't have to walk and brave these winter months alone, you know. Um, and we can, we can weather any winter to come, this winter or any winter to come if we're in it together. Okay, so I want to just do a, actually, a courage stone blessing. So I would call that your courage stone for this season if you want to, like, leave it in your car as a reminder, put it on your dresser, or sometimes um, I had another stone that meant something to me. I'd put it in my pocket, like, with what I knew I was going to have, maybe, like, an especially hard meeting or a hard day. And so maybe you want to keep that with you through the season. Keep it in your purse or something um, so you can look at it occasionally and know, like, yeah, this is... This is a season that I can I can grasp and hold on to. So at home, if you got your hand, you don't have a rock, but you can hold it in, you can just hold your hand in a fist. And so what I want you guys to do is I'm gonna just point to a spot on your body. There's four different spots. We're gonna do something a little unique, but you're just gonna hold that, hold the stone in your hand on that part of your body. And then I'm gonna say a blessing over that part. Okay. So if you would put your stone or your hand to your head, may you believe in your resilience resiliency when you are wintered. And place it on your shoulder. May you have the strength you need to bear life's burdens and on your heart. May you trust the love and mystery within yourself to uphold you. And then to your other hand, may your winter times of darkness become fruitful sources of growth, gifts to be given to yourself and to our wounded world. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, Jenny, for those words of encouragement and wisdom. I have a, a few thoughts. Um, first, um, I want to share that I, I think uh, our church, Roots and Branches, is in a season of winter, uh, not just literally. Um, but, you know, we are kind of in a time between times, too. We don't have the kind of busy schedule that we've had at other seasons as a church. Um, and we also don't have, we don't have like a very clear, this is the next thing for, a, as a church either, but we actually have a few processes in place where we're learning that we're coming to discover that. Um, and so, um, you can remember this church in your prayers as we we're actually starting, it's called an innovation incubator process where a few people from our church are going to put their heads together and s use some discernment and some research to come up with some ideas about what, what might the next chapter for Roots and Branches look like. Uh, an incubator 
sounds like something you do in the winter time, getting warm and letting something be born. Um, the other thing uh, that I thought of is um, this is a, a newer song by the band Fleet Foxes uh, called I'm Not My Season. And uh, there some of the words say, uh, uh, time is not what I belong to. I'm not the season I'm in. Um, and uh, I, th I think that's really interesting to reflect on seasons as something that's apart from you. Because when you're going through a chapter that doesn't feel a p particularly life-giving, uh, a chapter that can feel like failure or death, to know that's not the sum of who you are. You are more than that. You are loved by God. You are here for a reason. You belong. And you're worthy. And that's why we need one another to be living breathing reminders of that truth, um, even, even when the days are short and the nights are long in our lives. And so um, part of the reality of, of reflecting on seasons is the, the reality of surrendering ourselves to that which is beyond our control. And so that's what this closing song is about. If you want to remain seated, you can. This is kind of a sitting song, actually. So let's just, let's just sit. Uh, hold your stone in your hand and reflect as we uh, surrender ourselves to the love of God and to whatever season you happen to find yourself in. Here I am down on Surrendering all. all, surrendering all, and find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you, desperate for you. I surrender. to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to love you more. I want to love you
you offer your heart in surrender to our God, to your season, to the people around you with love and compassion, and go into your life and act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with God. Amen.